anticipate talking about. Oh my gosh, look at this guy. He needs to chill his little behind out. I'm gonna watch this video with you guys at the same time. I've never seen this video. I obviously did this session, but I've never seen this video. I just cut out, went through and cut out some of the boring parts where it shows I'm talking, but you and I are gonna watch this session together. What have I said about dogs who haven't met very many dogs? You see how he smelled the back of Prince above his tail? You see how he's smelling his neck? This dog, to my recollection, has never met a dog before. Okay, he's gonna meet a bunch of dogs today. So I've always said it, when they smell weird parts of the dog's body, they have met very few, usually under five dogs. Okay, we're gonna make this a Doberman party. We've got a little Doberman, younger than him. He's a big Doberman. This is Zeus, six month old dog. He will be a giant Doberman. We're gonna let Zeus out and we're just gonna watch this together. I'm gonna to fill in the blanks. I'm gonna to talk to you about the body language. I'm gonna to talk to you about what, what we're working on with Zeus. He needs to be with dogs. Now, does he need to be with dogs because their main problem is with dogs? They don't know if they have a dog problem. We're seeing that they don't. But he is with me because he is a dominant young dog who jumps and nips and growls at the owner. Not the male owner, but the female owner. He's a bold dude. That's why at the beginning I said Prince was chasing him and he was a little nervous. And I said, it's a little taste of his own medicine. That's a good thing for dogs. Would I let a dog who's super fearful and let Prince kind of, look at, he almost runs into Prince right there. He's a bold dog. Dogs like this need to go nuts with other dogs. You know, I think Caesar Milan said it like a happy, exercise dog is a happy dog or something. And I think people took that a little too far, but there is something magical about exercise. It's, it's gotten to the point where some people think that they can sort of do everything on their own and training and operant conditioning and treats and all that will, can solve problems if the owner just knows what they're doing and does it right. That's not true. People have jobs and lives. They cannot constantly be on their dog, have their dog on a leash in their house, be constantly reinforcing. Exercise has to happen. And by the way, exercise is not just walks. Walks are not the great exercise. Walks are great for desensitization, for mild exercise, for getting them out of the house. Walks are very important. But after this one hour session, and you're gonna see 40 minutes of it or 30 minutes of it, this dog is gonna be more tired than he's ever been. You know why? Because mentally stuff is happening. Because Prince chased him and he got tripped out because he's gonna meet six dogs today. That's why he is gonna be good, because he's gonna mouth those dogs and jump on those dogs and dogs are gonna jump on him. That's why he's gonna go home and he is not going to do to his mom for probably multiple days what he used to do, which is jump at her and nip at her and bite her and she tries to stop him and he doesn't stop. And not only is he not gonna do it for a couple days, he is going to be 30% less for the rest of his life from a one hour session. How do I know that? Because I do so many sessions like this, the people email me or they come back and they tell me this. They go, my dog is a different dog after one hour. That's insane. Now, does that happen with a dog who goes to the dog park every day? No, but this dog has almost never met any dogs in his life. So it's such a big deal what's happening today and his mental stimulation and his satiation and his exercise and all that pent up energy is getting out of his bones that it actually lasts ye like a year or it's it's crazy the dog literally changes sometimes because it's never happened before firsts are very powerful and firsts change dogs okay so it's first time playing good and we're just watching this together again i haven't seen this video so i probably told them listen put that knee up proactive knee and i'm over the jumping that dog is still with us as the board and train. She's calmed down a lot, but she is not a calm dog. We're watching this together. Whatever you see, I am seeing for the first time with you. Now, it was, you know, a week ago or a week and a half ago, um, but I do a lot of sessions. I forget what the heck's going on. What, what the heck happened in this thing? Oh my gosh, dog jumped right at the camera person. She's crazy, that black dog. And I grab her right there. It's enough, it's enough. 
All right, we're watching it together, guys. So this is the closest you'll feel to probably being at the session and me telling you what's going on and you seeing it. Jeez, Prince is going nuts. Okay, so they're running the importance of exercise. Oh yeah, Prince hadn't been in the pasture in like two days. We call that area the pasture. So he, oh yeah, this is what he does. He starts sprinting in a big circle, which was the greatest thing in the world for this dog. Yeah, you want to just not know where you're going. You might run into me and you might catch a knee. I Look at, did you see his ears pin when he looked at me right there? Did you guys see that? Rewind it if you didn't. He, it was probably from me bending my knees. If you want to run and not know where you're going, I as the human am not going to do gymnastics to get out of your way and possibly get taken out. It's called natural consequences. I put on Instagram, by the way, you guys should follow me, Beckman's Dog Training on Instagram. I don't talk about my other social media stuff a lot, but I put some different stuff on there. Um, you might like it. I put on Instagram this one dog that was walking and he was looking at another dog and he ran into like a like a box on the street. You know, those boxes that are on the side of the street. That's a natural consequence. You might want to look where you're going or you might run into something. They'll learn that in the wild real quick. You want to be crazy? Uh, you might run into a tree. You want to cross boundaries of where there's other wolves scent marking, you might die, right? There are consequences. So him running into my knee is a very small, but somewhat consequential consequence. So Prince just kept sprinting in a circle and that was, I just let him do it because this was the best thing for him. This guy needs to get a lot of energy out of his muscles. See how he's like, kind of his head's looking a lot and he's, we just, we had to, my goal for this session was to mentally and physically exhaust this guy. And of course we're talking about things and whatnot. I like that guy's proactive knee, right? I, I'm not a big fan of once the dog's up on you, kneeing them off. I'm a big fan of a proactive knee. As the dog's coming up, you take one step forward and you put your knee up. The dog doesn't anticipate it. So they start to jump and they run into your knee. You are not kneeing them. You gave them a split second to stop, but they did not anticipate you taking that step forward. They still have time to get out of the way, but they generally don't. You took your space back, okay, for jumping. I didn't anticipate getting into jumping in this video, but there's probably a lot of things during this next 20 minutes I'm not gonna anticipate talking about. Oh my gosh, look at this guy. He needs to chill his little behind out. Like, like, that's another way. He almost ran into me. He learned he might, he learned a little bit when he almost ran into me. He just decided to run on wood and he slipped and he went under the fence. He's no worse for wear. He learned surfaces are different. Okay. I'm not saying this dog has never been on wood. I don't know. Good. You want to run up to dad like that? All that guy did was put up his knee. He ran into it. This is going to be a 130 pound Doberman. Can we mess around with this dog's training? We cannot. We cannot. There is no more um, serious dog, no more intimidating dog in the world than a giant Doberman. It gets, take a 130 pound Cane Corso. They're serious. They're intimidating. 130 pound Doberman's more serious, more intimidating. There's a look of, when Dobermans get that big, their heads are so big and the long nose that you viscerally go, and they look so fast that you viscerally go, if that dog tries to get me, they're getting me. Okay, little dog, I didn't, I was, I didn't see what she was, he was doing, but you know, I decided to go grab him, but I didn't get him, which is fine. Sometimes if you go grab a dog, you often hear me say follow up. Well, sometimes, the dog got the point with just the attempted grab. Sometimes they don't. Look at this guy. You wonder why this dog is jumping on the female owner constantly. It's because he's a bull in a china shop and he has energy in his muscles that is going to come out. So you can either let him get it out with other dogs. And at six months old, this dog can be with other dogs. He's not aggressive. You can't get your aggressive dog with other dogs, but with your six month old Doberman, first play ball, I think. You can, you can either get it out or you can slam your head against a, a, a wall because that's, that's how hard that behavior is going to be 
to get rid of if you don't get the energy out. I can tell you, oh, when he jumps on you in the house and bites your arm, here's what you're going to do. But it's not going to work because of the energy pent up in your dog. Look at the energy pent up in this guy. When he's jumping on mom with this kind of energy pent up inside of him, right? Because they walk him, but they don't get him with other dogs because... Well, the same reason a lot of you don't get get your dogs with other dogs. Oh, we can't do them dog parks. We don't have friends with dogs. We move to a new area. We don't know anybody. All these reasons, right? But if they don't get it out, it's going to come out on you. And everything anyone tells you to do, oh, they've used an e-collar on him because of this. Okay, because they he he is doing all this stuff and they don't know what to do with it. But this is what they have to do. They have to keep doing it. Okay, they have to keep keep. That little guy almost slips. That's like a slippery spot right there. There, See, he just keeps, he's got a lot of bounce in him. It's just all this pent up energy in his muscles. And I like Prince. I'm going to probably let Prince get as rough with him as, as he can and let Prince push him. He's bold enough to jump on mom and nip on mom. He's bold enough to deal with another dog jumping on him and nipping him. Right? It's a little bit of his own medicine. Okay, and it's getting energy out and it's getting him mentally tired. It's doing all those things. So I hope I explained that on the importance of what's going on with this dog and what's going on with your dog. You have to holistically kind of do things for them that aren't operant, aren't, oh, he was good, give him a treat. Oh, he was bad, give him a correction. This is, this is different than that. This will make behaviors go away certain behaviors this will not do anything for his recall this will not do anything for his sit command or his down command this will help his stay command a little bit this will help his loose leash walking a little bit but this will really help his uh, i think he's gonna hump her yeah so we're over watch me my and this is that was one of those situations where i just i didn't think i was going to be able to actually follow up with him but my gut was that the point got across, right? I tried to grab him. He got tripped out. I think we we corrected, not forever, but for the moment, we helped that behavior. Now, he's still into her, so we'll just do this all day. You've heard me say that. You want to hump her? Go hump her again, and then I will go get you again, and I'll keep doing this, and I'll keep doing this. And just a little, and then a little like, Oh, and the need from them. I like it. He's a bull. He can't be running into people. And look, no worse for wear. Now I'm like, okay, you're a good boy. Because he is a good boy. Jeez. He's all mouthy. You see his little mouth go right there? I, my goal, Our goal was today, look at his tail, to just have him go and go and go and go and exhaust. And they, th this dog is so much better for this giant one-hour playtime. It was the most bang for their buck by far, okay, by far, is to us to talk and me to, to mentally and physically exhaust this dog today. And why did they do it with me? Because that's why a lot of you guys do this with me. You're just not sure how your dog's going to be. You don't have the controlled environment. You don't want to go to a dog park. You don't know if your dog would be good. All that stuff, okay? Now, you don't have to pay me to do it. If you can find someone else with a bunch of dogs in a field and or go to a dog park and take your chances, do it. By all means, do it. All right, so we're going to let, I don't know if he's going to meet another dog. Now, he, he also, by the way, he's six months old. He's too sexual to be for six months old. I'm probably talking to him about that right now, actually. He's too, he's too into her. At six months, this should be happening at nine months, not six months. So they have to make a choice about neutering or not and that is a choice i can help with but i'm probably telling him listen at six months he's already doing this prince didn't do that till nine months and he's pretty sexual okay so they got to think about that why would you neuter your dog i mean nature god whatever you want to call it made them the way they are and i do believe in that however it depends on your life you want to go to you want to go to dog parks with a I'm not saying he's dominant, but let's say your dog is dominant. You want to go to dog parks with an unneutered dominant dog, um, you're taking chances. Not even that your dog will do anything, but dogs aren't going to like it. 
That's what you signed up for, okay? If you don't neuter your dog and you know as you get older your dog's dominant and not submissive, that's what you signed up for. You can't be mad at anybody, all right? You signed up for that by not neutering them and taking them around a bunch of dogs and having your dog be like, listen, I'm not gonna take any nonsense from any of these guys. Well, the other dogs, they're gonna give you nonsense. They're gonna, it's just, it's one out of, maybe it's one out of 20, maybe it's one out of 100. But there's a, you may have a fight and it's not necessarily okay for a dog to come over. Oh my gosh, look at this guy. Look at this guy. It's not necessarily okay for your dog to, for a dog to be pushy and mean to your dog and your dog whoop the dog at the dog park. It's probably, it's probably the best thing for the other dog. But it's a dog park. This is like society. Like just because something's good for a person or a dog doesn't mean you can do it at the grocery store, you know, or the dog park. All right. It's like enough with the, I should have, now that I'm rewatching this, I should have gone and grabbed him before this. I think I'm talking and then maybe I miss some of the smelling or partly it's because she doesn't seem to mind it i think i mean he's only really mounted her once maybe twice but and she doesn't seem to mind it so maybe that's why i'm letting it go i don't really i really don't know all right doberman party but this guy just needs to run run if, if dogs are ever running to you by the way bend your knees let them run into you Right, rather than rather than them take you out. When you bend your knees, you're ten times stronger and more sturdy than if you don't bend your knees. If you keep your legs locked out, you're getting taken out. If you bend your knees, it's totally different. Totally different thing. All right, we're gonna fast forward it here to some more interesting stuff. Back to the play. Him and the puppy playing rough. This puppy um, needs it a little bit. My dogs were raised being around a lot of dogs, dealing with a lot of dogs, and that's how they got so good, Prince and Bosco. So he's calming down a little bit. He's not totally calm. I don't know what Prince is doing with the puppy. Some sort of Jedi mind trick. Look at that, look at that dog. He's like, okay, Prince, you're the boss. Look at Prince. Oh my God, look at that. Prince like told that dog to lie down. That was crazy. All right, I don't know what I'm, oh, back to Prince. Look at this. Prince is like a Jedi. That was pretty crazy. I wish, let's see the camera. Oh, and now Prince is whooping the puppy. Um, all right, now we're going to the pool, I believe. So you're gonna see, why do we go to, why did I go, and I go, I go back to the pasture after the pool. Right there, they started to calm down down there. We need to push this guy. You guys have kids. Um, the goal I've never thought that the goal is to like make my kids that tired. I just that's just not how I roll. But there are times when it's like we're going to hike or I don't know they're surfing or something. It's like no no no, you got to go back out there. You got to give it your all. We gonna we're gonna just because you want to quit does not mean we quit, right? You got to, uh, it depends if you want, do you want kids who are like kind of okay in society or do you want kids who are thriving in society, who are leaders in society? Okay. There's a way to parent to create exceptional people and there's a way to parent to create average people. There's a way to parent to create happy, non-anxiety ridden people and there's a way to parent to create, um, uh, unhappy people, right? So I believe that me and my wife and the people I surround myself with uh, do a pretty good job of parenting and doing the nuance of things that some people don't do. And I take that into the dog world and the dog world has taught me how to do that with kids and kids have taught me how to do that with dogs. Um, all right, so in the pool, he's six months old. Do you think he's ever heard running water like that? These guys live in Northern California. Um, maybe, maybe has, maybe hasn't. It's a stimulus that is going to do something to his brain. Maybe he hasn't been in water, right? If he hasn't been in water, this is great. It's a new 
stimulus that's going to trigger the brain in a different way. We also want them to cool down. I don't think it's hot. I think I have a jacket on, but still, we want them to cool down. Hearing the water, being in the water, getting cool and then getting more energy, all of this stuff is good to push this guy. Black dog swimming, seemingly doesn't know how to swim. Great. She's all right. She's an all right swimmer. That dog has a lot of energy. You saw that down in the pasture. She's got a lot of nervous energy. So this was good for her too. So, all right, just talking through this stuff. I'm watching it with you guys, okay? Um, let's go to some more interesting stuff here. All right. Oh, he's kind of trying to hump. She kind of stops it. Then he just forgets about it for a minute. That's good. I don't know what I'm doing. I think I don't want to get shaken on by the black dog. But I look like I'm freezing cold. I don't know what I'm doing right now. Why I'm walking like that with my hands. Um, going in the water, that's a good thing. As I've explained before. He's into the black dog. Too sexual. He's too into it. He's too into it. You want to take your, your dogs this sexual at six months old? You want them to be around a lot of dogs? Oh yeah, so now I'm saying they need to start doing it, right? I can't do it all, and we're in a smaller area so we can actually follow up. So I'm like, get him, get him, make sure you get him. That is the consequence for the hump, okay? That's what I should have done in the pasture, but the pasture is so big that at times it's hard to do that. So that's one reason we go to a smaller area like the pool, we can always follow up. There are just some situations hard to follow up. We wanna do it the best we can, but you know we can't all the time. So the guy followed up. Now, let's see. Does this dog go back to the black dog and mount her or is into her? They can pair up the two events. I, The dog thinks, I did this. Mean guy, the owner in this case, who's not a mean guy, but um, went and got me and my ears pinned. Oh, a lot of smelling. And a grab. Okay, too much. Look at his tail. It's a big game. So you see me there? Just obsessive smelling. Now, he doesn't get it. Everything's a game. Look at his tail. So I don't let go in my energy. I did this on the bulldog video from six months ago, these bulldogs where you, you hold them behind the collar until they calm like right at their neck area. Now I wanted to get it nuts. So when you ever see me swing that gate open like that, it's because I want craziness. I want to see if a dog has a prey drive. Oh my Lord, he fell again. This is the greatest thing for this dog. Him falling, him, his brain has to learn that his body will get him into bad situations so that he can calm himself down. Now, the good some, do some dogs, their nervous systems get tweaked out. He, he is not. Some dogs, they start like it's like too much when they're nervous or something. This, that's not him. This dog needed the nuttiness for an hour. Oh my gosh, again with the running. And I let it go because I just want this dog to exhaust himself because they are going to have the best. He's going to be literally a different dog after this. Okay, but back to he fell again because his, his brain is getting him into situations that his, that his body can't cash. I don't think that's a real phrase. but And he's got to learn that, oh yeah, I fell and I ran into that thing and that didn't feel good, hence I'm not going to do it again. It's consequences. It's not, this isn't rocket science, okay? This isn't rocket science. And I don't know what Prince is doing. I don't know. I don't know why. I, I think Prince, he thinks it's really cool that no one can catch him. I think he's like, I'm the man. You guys can't say he speeds up right there. He's like, you guys didn't get me. Oh, you didn't get, oh, she almost got him. Um, that's what I think he's doing. Like I see dogs. Oh yeah. He's all proud of himself right there that he did that little move. And it's the best thing for really all these dogs, but especially that dog, that dog. And then sometimes my dogs, after they do that, or my dogs do this thing where they'll lay on their belly or they'll see who, who got to them. Let's say the running thing, they'll see who got to them and then who like nipped them. And then they'll remember it. And then they'll decide to like kind of whoop the dog later. Not like whoop them bad, but like go, oh yeah, I remember when you got to me when I was running and you you like hit me a little too hard. 
and then five minutes later, my dogs will go like, okay, now you're going to, now I'm going to let you know, uh, give it back to you. It's just a thing. I don't know. But I think it takes a long time to learn. Look how big he is. He's like 60 pounds probably. And he's six months old. There's a good rule of thumb that at, I think it's four months old, your dog is half its body weight. Maybe it's five, four or five months old, your dog's half its body weight. So I don't know. I think that's interesting. I was about to poop. All right. So guys, uh, I don't know if there's much more on here. I don't want to just keep talking. Oh, there's four minutes left. Let's just keep talking. Okay. Cause I hope you guys find this interesting. You're seeing a long private session. I've never done a video like this where I just said, okay, let's just talk. Let me just talk to you about what's going on. Now we're going to head up and that's pretty much the end of the session. So the importance of exercise. Okay, the importance of consequences, the importance of getting your dog with other dogs, which is the, the getting your dog with other dogs is the most amount of exercise I believe you can get your dog. It's mentally and physically tiring. And it's not just one, it's not just running, it's jumping, it's all these things, and it's mentally tiring. All right. Oh, okay, I'm gonna do just some simple weights. I don't want them all to sit and stay because I don't want to, I don't want them, I don't want to ask them a behavior before they, I want them to learn that they need to wait and learn to hold themselves back when they're not being asked something. Sometimes I let dogs fly through gates, but I want them to always hesitate, okay? I love my doorway method when I don't ask anything. Just learn to, learn to hesitate in life. Learn to hesitate. The doorway method can help leash reactivity. The doorway method can help flying out your front door. The door of not asking. Hey, that's the video. Subscribe to the channel. Please uh, write a comment. Hopefully you enjoyed this video and like, like the video. A six month old unneutered dog at a bigger older dog's house should submit to the bigger older dog, right? Yeah. Some little punk comes to your house. He's 14 <laughs> years old. And he's like, what's up, dad? Or, well, you know, old guy, you're not old, but you're like, no, 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 no. This isn't how this works, dude. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. The natural thing is for a kid not to do that. The natural thing is for him. Now, if Prince is a jerk, he can stand up for himself, whatever. But that's not what we're talking about. 